Good morning. Today is Sunday. It's December 1st, and it kind of doesn't seem like December yet. Um, what's coming up? Christmas. Christmas, okay. And so if you've noticed up front, we do have an Advent wreath up front. And Advent is a, a time of remembering the coming of Jesus and to kind of get us prepared. And that's one of the purposes of Advent is to get us prepared for that time. When you look at the Advent wreath, the Advent wreath has the green, the color um, testifies to the, um, uh, to the life that we have in Christ. Also the uh, circle, you can consider that the circle does have no beginning, no end. So it does speak to life without end, our eternal life that we have through Jesus. And the candles signify God's son, Jesus, being the light of the world. And so Advent is set up to help us prepare for Christmas. And it's done the first, uh, the four weeks before, the four Sundays before uh, Christmas. And as they go through that, each one of the candles have a different purpose. The um, candle today is the candle of... Hope is listed here, but prophecy is how we always remember as our family when we done, have done the Advent wreath, and prophecy or hope is that candle. Um, a couple weeks back when we were doing a youth group, we were uh, talking about prophecy as we're getting into that um, a lesson series for uh, this time, and just understanding or looking at how the prophecy that we see in the Bible was fulfilled in Jesus, and there's over 300 prophecies, so I'm going to say 400, that Jesus fulfilled within the time and coming here. And it's amazing to think of that, that God gives us fulfilled prophecy that we see in Jesus, that we can see the hope that we have in the future prophecies that the Bible does have for us. So prophecy is a prediction or a promise that God gives to provide a preview of his future plans. And unlike uh, human predictions, you know, God's predictions always come true. God doesn't uh, guess at what will happen. He doesn't um, hope that something will occur. Instead, he makes a promise, and God will always keep his promises. And that's what we can hope in in the candle when we look at prophecy and consider hope for this first week of Advent. The prophecy candle is purple in color. And it represents, the colors do represent different, you know, specific things. And the uh, prophecy candle being pur purple does represent and signify an attitude of repentance and preparation. And as we come to uh, the Advent season, as we come to Christmas Day, when we recognize and remember that Jesus did come for us, we want to make sure that we're preparing ourselves and preparing our hearts and repentance as we get ready for that and coming to Jesus. <clears throat> the um, one passage of prophecy that I'd like to read is found in Isaiah. And again, there's lots of passages. Isaiah 9, Isaiah 9, 2, and Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. 9, 2, the people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Those who live in dark um, those who live in a dark land, the light will shine on them. And then in 9, 6, and 7, for a child will, bo will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest upon his shoulders. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be no end to the increase of his government or of peace. On the throne of David, and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and righteousness from then on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. That was approximately 750 years before the birth of Jesus. God gave those words to the prophet Isaiah so he could tell about the coming of the Messiah. And the people of Israel were um, living in darkness at the time, but they had a hope that Messiah was coming. And when Messiah would come, he would help 
with the struggles that they were facing, the difficulties that they had. And Jesus did just that. He proclaimed or he became a light, the light of the world. And Jesus uh, says in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in, dar- walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Never again will people need to live in darkness and despair. And even around us in our world today, we can see that people don't need to live in the darkness and the hopelessness that they do have. We have the light through Jesus that we can give to them. And when we look at prophecy, when we look at the hope that we have and the proof that we can see through the promises that were fulfilled in Jesus, we have a hope that we can give to people and we can show to people that can give them a hope in the middle of whatever they're facing, whatever they're struggling with. So as we prepare ourselves for Advent, for, uh, we're also looking to prepare others as well uh, as um, in drawing them to the light of the world. A hymn that we usually sing as a family, Christmas Carol, uh, is... O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Does anybody know that one? A few of you? Do you want to sing it? Yeah? Okay. Now, y'all got to help me out because I'm not really good, okay? So, but it's a, it's a good hymn to, a uh, good song to uh, uh, help us remember about the coming of Jesus and Emmanuel being God with us. It's on page five, I'm sorry, 245, we get to use the hymnals. Underneath some of the chairs, you'll find a little red book. Is everybody ready?
So we'll light the first candle of Advent, the candle of prophecy or hope. And let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending your prophets to prepare the world for the coming of your Son. Lord God, I thank you for preserving those prophecies for us in the Bible, for helping us to see the fulfillment of those in Jesus. God, and as, um, as we're in the middle of our preparation for Christmas, with decorating, with shopping, with all the other activities we have going on, God, I ask you to help us to prepare our hearts for Jesus as well. Lord, I ask you'll use this uh, season of Advent to draw us nearer, closer to you, and to allow us to show others the hope that they can have in you as the light that shines in the darkness of our world can bring life into their situation. God, thank you for the comfort of knowing the names of Jesus that we see in Isaiah and other passages that bring hope through knowing that Emmanuel, God, is with us. God, I ask you to help us to live a life that others will be able to see you reflected in and all that we do and say. In Jesus' name, amen.